We love beatboxers. You guys are amazing. What about parkour? Do we know any beatboxers? <laughs> well, no, I don't think so. Only people that do it just so there's this for the fun. And then you, the individuality and the beauty of humanity itself yeah. when it's let free and it's just out there doing its thing and it's so absorbed in its thing that the real world doesn't penetrate and ruin it and its focus is unpenetratable and it's its love for what it's doing is there. And you see that, you know, imagine old mate um, Free Solo. Like, you're not... Well, that's next level. I was thinking you were going to point out foiling, like old man well, foiling. Well, old man foiling's the same thing, isn't it? I feel like I'm just as incredible as the free solo guy <laughs> when I catch a little one-foot wave. So I started foiling, and I basically quit surfing, and then I used to, in a former life, I would hunt for good waves, and now yeah. I actually hunt for bad waves. <laughs> I, I, and the I, hunt I'm, is real. I mean, it's... It's not easy to find a bad wave. Yeah, well, they're everywhere, though, aren't they? You on think. a certain day, on an island, yeah. on a rock, there's always something somewhere. I went yesterday for my first time in, you know, for, in quite a while. I had a little go at the point a couple of weeks ago, and then I went there, and every single time I get to my feet, I'm terrified. As I jump to my feet, and I just don't know where I'm landing, and then I land, I think, oh, you got this. Oh, no, you don't. And the foil reacts to your thoughts. Mm. Its sensitivity is on such another level to, to a surfboard itself, being up in the air and the sensitivity of the wing, that I feel it react to my thoughts. I'll think something, and it reacts to the thoughts, and I don't even know that my body's reacted to the thought yet. Hello, peoples. Barton Lynch here. Welcome to the Stoke Bloke Show. Big thanks to the Pipeline Studios. Not a lot like Pipeline out there today, PK. A little Back different. Door. It's kind of right hand is running down with this northeast swell that we have wrapping around and running down the coastline. And there's rights running all the way down the coast, kind of like a Mexican sandbar point. Well, not really. It's not exactly like that, but kind of similar in well, a way. Now you got me thinking about tacos. Oh, again. You've changed the entire broadcast podcast. To a podcast taco about food. Talk. Taco talk. You, um, do you like tacos? Oh, come on. You are what you eat. You're looking at one. <laughs> <laughs> I've, thought, I've always thought they were great. Burrito definitely felt like a better idea than As the taco. A, well, really? Why is that? Oh, just the, the, the volume, the fact it's all wrapped up, it's contained. I didn't like the, you know, the old taco Tuesday nights at Turtle Bay Hotel. And you would go down there as much as you could eat and you'd put it all in there and you'd have it all and you'd bite it <clears throat> and it just start crumbling and falling apart and I'd be trying to grab bits and pieces and and then you get a burrito and go, now there, now we're talking, mate. This thing's self-contained. It's not going anywhere. As long as that bottom's sealed, you're not getting drip, you're in good shape. Burritos versus tacos. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. And, um, That's it's, great. You, know, a, you got a really good point there. I've always said all Mexican food is the same ingredients, just in different shapes. Well, it is, isn't it? Different shapes, different containment, different sources, perhaps. You've got put the tostada, which is just the tortilla on the bottom, and everything's just living wild on Beans top. Beans and, and How do cheese you even approach grilled a on top. Tostada from, there's no side to come in from. Yeah. The taco, it's obvious that you come in from this little that's, corner. That's self explanatory. Yes, if you don't hold that, you've got to learn to connect that back end. To get it all in, but the burrito, you're right, it's right there. You could like, hit somebody with it. You could literally, it, yeah, <laughs> batten someone across the head with it. And then you got to think about, you're right, price per quantity. What are you trying to do as a young surfer with not a lot of money? Probably that burrito holds a lot more volume of yeah. content. The one that I thought was amazing with no money as a young surfer was a bowl of brown rice with a can of tuna and soy sauce. Epic. Pretty cheap. So simple, so cheap. And that's before you started seeing the stuff about the tuna and understanding the big fish mm -hmm. and the heavy metals and the, you know, you think you're doing something good eating some, and then you don't know how they're caught and there's all of that. So I kind of stopped it, but that was a basic, simple staple for me. Brown rice, tuna and soy sauce in a bowl. So easy, so simple, so I mean, good. getting your nutrients pretty, pretty easy yeah. too. Yeah. yeah, simple. Did you simple. ever do cup um, of noodles? Cup noodles, Japan, we did the cup noodles when you didn't have any choice. I have done them. You know, you look at them all hyd what do you call that? Yeah. Hydrated in there or whatever it is. Like well, just you know if you read the list at this point in your life, you'd be horrified, but when you're nineteen yeah, yeah. you didn't care. Well then that, that's a really good point. I ate a lot of McDonald's as a kid. Did anything in your life matter until twenty seven? Well, yes, surfing mattered and, and, and success mattered. You would have cared about your boards, your wax, your grip, your sponsors, but you weren't caring about food and things you're putting in your body. Not really, no. That consciousness Way less. doesn't come in until 
Yeah. A little later. I suppose the hippies, you go the 60s, the 70s, that period was all about health food and Tracks Magazine, when I was a kid, I think we've said this before, Tracks Magazine was full of vegetarian menus. And there would be these recipes in there and you'd open the surf mag and there'd be surfing and then there'd be guys doing yoga and then there'd be healthy vegetarian food and you knew you were a part of a culture that, that stood for some different stuff. And then I could tell that it was forward thinking and it understood things that the world I was living in going to McDonald's for lunch and I never, no one ever told me it was bad, three meals a day. And they used to have this thing where two all beef paste special sausage cheese because only on the CFC bun. Two all beef paste special sausage cheese because only on the CFC bun. That the, song, that jingle. Yeah, if you could say that within a certain time frame, and I can't remember what it was, and we could figure it out with a test, but that you would get a free Big Mac. Really? You'd go in and sing that jingle you, to the counter? But you'd have to get it done in 10 seconds or whatever. So two all beef paste special sausage cheese because only on the CFC bun. Two and all ding! Two all beef paste special sausage cheese. Cheese, pickles, on pickles, pickles onions, onions on a sesame, sesame seed bun. bun. To all beef and special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Say that again. To all beef and special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. To all beef and special sauce, lettuce, cheese, onions, pickles, onions on a little. McDonald's Big Mac, the big sandwich with a great big taste that everybody's talking about. And you would get. A free Big Mac. I would like I'd to be film there you all day. Let's go down to Hollywood and McDonald's and get you trying to sing that song and see how they look at you. <laughs> yeah. Call He's the paddy lost wagon. It. That's right. They would take you away. Wow. But so no one told us, right? They didn't tell you cigarettes were bad. Imagine all the people who smoked cigarettes thinking they were cool because they watched an actor in a movie do well, it. You could look up right now. I'll post it over this video. But, I mean, there's doctors recommending cigarettes for their patients, you know. Well, so because for, for tension. Bought or, off. Follow the science. Follow the, follow the money, Anything peoples. a paid-off doctor says must be true. It's a sad state <laughs> of affairs, that one, isn't it? And, and what, what I saw, a meme that said, um, judge your doctor by how hard they try to get you off meds. Not how hard they try to get you right. on the med. I went, well, there you go, mate. As a, as, a, as a way to understand your doctor, if they're trying to get you on meds, I would not have a doctor like that. I'm looking for a doctor that's open-minded, that's looking at the options and may go, hey, there might be a better way for you with this and, and you'll find a natural alternative to the pharmaceuticals and that's most probably the best judgment of a doctor, not that I would know. You're not a doctor. No, I'm a doctor of... Stokeology. Waffle. Yeah, we're doctors of stokeology, that's for sure. And I where did you get your time. doctorate? Yeah, I got my doctorate out in the surf, right out here in the Pacific Ocean, off the shores of Australia, Hawaii, and the, the beaches I could get my way to. And ever since then, it's been the medicine of life, mate, the elixir of life. I'll go there for everything. And my little boy, Lion, he got his board to the back of the head this week. Um nose in the back of the head was he trying to win the send it uh, yeah <laughs> the nearly make no the nearly make yeah you know what when now you've brought that up we have postponed that because we thought in the in the midst of all of what's going on with the video challenge itself it was another message or another focus that was detracting from the big picture mm -hmm. and our good friends at creatures went do you think we oh and i think we should we should do this after the blast off so we That's were open cool. for another week um till december 2nd with the blast off and then um at that point there's still a few weeks of we've got so many videos so much so many prizes and we still give away posts and continue running the event for another couple of weeks after it and then once that dust is settled we're going to come back and we're going to do the Creatures of Leisure nearly makes giveaway as a separate event with focus of its own so that's going to be a good way to deal with that thank you for bringing it up all right that's cool <laughs> I love the fact that it's winter I love the fact that there's waves every day we've been surfing every day there's been different weather and different sides of the islands lighting up and you've been on the the Oahu surf trip and going to different places and riding different waves and that's North amazing Shore surf trip well yeah or even just, just the Oahu. We've been to the west side, we've been to the east side, we've been travelling around and getting waves in different places. Um, but, you know, we've seen that the, the pros arrive, we've seen the influence of all, the, uh, all of the competition sort of vibe and psych going on in the area, which is cool as it's all down at Hully Eva and no one in their right mind would stay at sunset if you were surfing in an event at Hully Eva because the traffic, as we all know, is just terrible. So we don't see much of the Hully Eva Challenger Series is on standby. Probably going to start Tuesday. Yeah, well, and there'll be a little west swell tomorrow, but maybe too small. Um, but there's a Tuesday, Thursday, two swells back to back that they will get enough surf to finish the event in, start, finish and conclude. And that'll be the end of the Challenger Series. We'll know who's qualified uh, for next year's um, championship tour. But I... 
You yeah. saw this clip. I'm just going to slide this clip over. Please do, mate. Do some, uh, do some Barton Lynch commentary. Oh, John, John Florence, a massive hack there in the pocket. Drives off the bottom. Big cleaner <laughs> wrap, not as deep. But still some speed out the back end of it. Lays that back arm out of the top of that one, PK. And another gaff in the pocket. This guy is on some kind of surfing steroids, I tell you. He's on another level. Look at that gaff. Now the tube ride, right? John John Florence. You asked the question. <laughs> is he any chance of winning Haleiwa? Does he have any chance of winning the hearts and minds of the people? He's already won the hearts and minds of the people. He's won, he's won the imagination of every surfer in the world because when you watch him, you see his individuality and personality in it. And it is just so fluid and beautiful. And I've often said, you can't train to this point. This is a different level of consciousness. This is a different level of, of human engagement with your life and with what you're doing. And he's so focused and so sincere and real as an individual. John John Florence is John John Florence. There's no other sticker or bit of anyone else in the world on there. Obviously, he's had his influences over the years. But he is what I would call a good kid, mate. You look at him, you look at his brothers, you look at what they're doing, you look at that performance, and that comes from a clean soul. You can't surf like that without having a clean soul, mate. You can't be a dickhead and ride a wave like that. You can't, huh? It's not going to work, mate. It's not going to... The feeling's not going to relate. You can watch good surfing all day, but when you feel good surfing and someone's so connected to their surfing that it makes you feel things, that's great surfing, and that's what he does. Most of the time, right? He looks so connected to that wave, and I know it's his... You'd probably have to say six or seven of these breaks are his home break. Yeah. But that was such a statement session. That was during the Vans Digital Triple Crown. He was out there for a month putting together his uh, entries. Mm -hmm. Nobody could beat him over a month. I mean, you might beat John John in 30 minutes, but you ain't going to beat him on the North Shore over a month. So that whole contest kind of set up... It's kind of a scam. Like, okay, John John's got a month to surf Pipeline, a month to surf Sunset, and a month to surf Hollywood. And he keeps winning all the divisions each year. I mean, he's just... With the talk of you, what about the old 500K from WSL for a world record ride? Yeah, that's a funny so, offer. That's the safest money ever given. That's the safest offer, is that so common? That was them pretending that they were involved in the... And, and what I see is that you've got 20 foot plus which is a, a, an effort by the riders themselves, the big wave surfers themselves, to try and create something where they put their names together. They go, okay, we're going to go and do this. We're all going there to surf it anyway. Can we create something that gives us a livelihood out of what we're doing, risking our lives? Because I suppose their efforts with WSL didn't bear fruit. Right, they the cancelled end. the big wave tour. There's two events, but these guys all, you know, you can't get 10 people to agree on a shirt colour. No. That's so right. you're, you're certainly not going to get anyone to agree that that's the biggest wave ever ridden. And that's so swell dependent too. Yeah, you could go a whole winter without a swell of that size. Um, it's pretty safe money, as you said. It does kind of, to me, you know when you throw big money out there? $500,000. Yeah, I always go, it's better not kind of talk about the money. And that's what it felt like to me when I read the 500K. I was like sick. And then I sort of went, oh, it's a world record. It's one person. There's all these other people out there risking their lives, mate. And I always thought that's why we went from top 32 to top 44 was more jobs for the boys. It's not really promoting big wave surfing. It's like they're trying to champion that they found the champion. I don't know. And, they're, they're, and that they're engaged and they're giving big money and they're supporting it yeah. and all of that stuff where the support comes on a day-to-day -day basis, not on a once-in-a-lifetime ride. Really. But that's an interesting situation in itself. Where um, could that be? Digital Triple Crown's where, interesting. Well, real quick, yeah. where, could that, where could that world record wave come from? There's got to be only two or three spots. Yeah, you would think it's got to come from Nazare. Nazare. You know, given the way or, that stands up and, and all the other... Outer logs. And is it a tow wave or is it a paddle wave? It's an extraordinarily rare swell for outer logs. One, year at, one swell a year at, you know, at where Nazare you've got... More chances that one of them big teepees just stands up in the middle out of that deep trench and just goes that high. So there's five hundred thousand dollars sitting in Portugal right now, maybe waiting for someone to get it. Yeah, and that's you know that's I suppose they all add up, don't they? All the bits and pieces that people bring to the table to promote surfing and help it grow—they're all good. When we talk about John John, we recognise the the efforts of his younger brother Nathan Nathan's over there in Scotland and Ireland. It. What he is 
the waves that he has had, the surfing he's been doing, how hard he's been charging and the, the content he's been putting out is the best. And I, I, I just keep taking my hat off every time I see a post of him just throwing himself over some crazy slab and he's over there on his own putting all of the rubber on and, and setting a new standard for going for it in that type of conditions. Um, the Hawaiians like it warm. He don't care. He's he got, doesn't care. He's got all his rubber on, he's ready to go and throw. Barton, I'm, I'm sort of technically one of Nathan's sponsors because I pay him $4.99 a month for exclusive content on Instagram. So I've got you a, didn't understand that this yes, worked. I've got, he's got a subscription opportunity, and I said, I got to see what this is like. Well, he so to? it gets me into a private group chat where he's very funny. Um, first thing he did was send me some pictures of his feet. Um, so I don't know what that meant. I paid a man money to see his feet, I guess. That's an but yeah, situation. so he's, he's actually really tackling the self-promotion aspect of pro surfing and having fun with it. He's connecting with fans and, you know, we're kind of on board with him as he goes mm. through Europe and he's, he's generating interest and it's, and obviously a little bit of money, probably not much, but he's really funny. I mean, he is charging some crazy slabs <laughs> in full wetsuit. Yeah. Eating a GoPro at the same time. I don't know That's how he pulls all that be. off. That that big left he had mm. where he came out at the bottom. I'm thinking, how did he do that? And you see he's got the GoPro in his mouth. and That Mulligamore or something yeah, like that? Yeah, Yeah, that's incredible. So somewhere over there, those waves are going to come from. If well, there is ever a, a, you would think, you know, the outer reefs here have that opportunity as well. Um, and it's just that rare wave, rare moment in time. And um Time will tell if it happens. I would say he's winning the Internet of Surf 100%. It's yeah. the thing I'm most interested in. I can't wait to see the next one. We saw him today, and it was a classic because we all do it, where you paddle for the first one, don't get the first one, turn around and get the second one on the head. And he, he had it happen to him on this slab, and it's something that happens to all of us, and it's one of their mistakes. You just go, oh, I should have known better. And then the, the fitness stuff. How yeah. strong, how healthy, how committed he is to his lifestyle and his fitness and his strength is the reason he's able to charge like that, you know, because he is, he's, you know, he's working to build this enormous amount of confidence and then he's challenging that confidence in real situations and it's just growing and growing and growing and turning him into one of the best surfers in the world. Safe to say you're a Nathan Florence fan. A big fan, mate. All the boys, that family, just... Good kids, they are who they are. How impressive yeah. is Ivan at skating? Yeah, he's incredible at skating, and it's just got that style, hasn't he? He's just got that beautiful, relaxed style, and uh, he's a goofy, so we like that. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, every good family needs a goofy in there, so thank God they got Ivan. Okay, where are we at? Yeah, we're BL Blast Off, are we in week five? Is that possible? We are in week five, mate. It's, we've concluded week five. We're in week six is actually what it is. Last final week of open uh, for video submissions through to December 2nd. Great week. These last two weeks is when things heat up. We, the videos just start pouring in. I've got to apologise. I'm way behind on all sorts of things. There's been surf, and um, I've got a lot of videos to coach, so I'm going to get to that soon. We've got videos coming in from a whole bunch of new countries as well. India this week. Harash Pakish. Who is India. A, India. His sister has been a part of it the last couple of years. And uh, he's a part of it this last year and this year. So everywhere we kind of, it's amazing. We start to touch these places and Barbados every year somewhere it puts itself on the map and Canary Islands has done it. They've got amazing young grommets up there in the Canaries. And this year it was Barbados who put itself on the map with some amazing videos. So great to be connected with them. I want to read a little bit of mail from Carter Dawley. That's the kid with the cleanup video. That's the kid with the cleanup video. Really impressive Good kid, eh? Does a lot of good stuff. There he's, there's his message right there. He put in a longboard video and said, I, wow. I know you haven't uh, I haven't seen any longboarding. I thought it blast off needed some longboarding. I was like, yes, you are right. It did. And good on you. Thank you. And then he sent me this message after we awarded him for his cleanup video as well. And we've got a New Earth Project prize pack going his way to New Jersey. But he said, hi, so stoked you like my videos. I want to learn and try every kind of surfboard. I've been surfing every single day for 911 days in a row through snow and storms and hurricanes, safely, of course. I, I document my days every day on my Instagram, at Carter Catches Waves, if you want to follow my surfing adventure. I think this is an awesome contest. Thank you for making everyone feel welcome, even if we have little waves. I try and inspire everyone to be nice and kind, and I try to leave everything better than I found it. 
I'm a large, <laughs> 10 to 12 for tops. Um, so they're 911 days straight. And I saw the other day, this is, this is a week ago, so he's at 917 days straight, whatever it is today. Wow, he's daily. Every single day for three years, Go regardless Carter. of the conditions in New Jersey, wow. Carter Dawley has got out and surfed. So, Carter Dawley, we respect you, mate. I remember doing that as a grommet too. I never missed days. I surfed every day for decades, most probably. You know what I mean? So I got that and I was like, that's the spirit of, of Blast Off is for those kids who just love what surfing is and they come together, support each other. And um, good on you, Carter. Thank you, mate. We love that little message. Week five. Go through some names. Hit us. Week five. We gave, continued to give away the prizes and stoke the kids out. We gave a Stoke Award by, from our friends at Hurley Europe uh, to Tom Derge, a nine-year-old kid from Anglet, France, who ripped. We gave a Charger Award to Zoe Bradshaw, this backhand barrel that she pulls into, no hands, drives along it forever until she just gets exploded. And then she put in her high-performance video. And that young lady is on a whole nother level of coming surfing along, for a nine-year-old. For a nine-year-old, beyond coming along, leading the way, you know, it's amazing. And then we, we gave our first prize pack ever to Scotland, to Callie and Kai Crookshank. They got a spy optics pack. And then we promoted our three young three youngest uh, under sixes, or t- Noah Reynolds and Cruz Craft, two of them. We've got a young girl coming up this week. But Noah Reynolds and Cruz Craft are both four years old. And those kids were putting stoke on everyone's faces. High performance for week five in the 14s. I had five videos. Dylan Wilcoxon from the Mental Eyes. Yep, we've heard that name. Yep. Catalina Zaraquai from Peru, 14-year-old girl. Carlisle Pinero Schooley from Maui, 13-year-old. Great air video from the pool. Kasai Adachi from Japan, who rips. And then Chesne Guno from here on the North Shore as well. In the 12s, we had uh, Merrick Mockcatel. Winning the boys and Alana Morse winning the girls for the high performance video of week five, and she was from New Zealand. Then we had Rocco Rigliato in the tens. Where do you see Rocco Rigliato's video? This kid is is, is he from just Italy charging. or New yeah. Jersey? Italy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's the from names. Italy. I want to play a game where you put the names on one side and you put the countries on the other. That would be a great game. Rigliato. A Rigliato. Nine years old. Did his parents send in any recipes with? No, no recipes, okay. no par- Parmigiana recipes, none of that. Leonie Zorik, nine-year-old Australian from Byron Bay, or broken head actually. Zoe Bradshaw and Moses Hennings. Moses Hennings is a young kid from California who sent in, his first video was full of uh, frontside. And I was like, hey, what do you got on your backside? I'm thinking in my mind, they always show you the stuff that's the best. And I'm thinking, okay, so he's got a weakness here in the backhand and he's shown us all the forehand. And he sent in his backside compile or backhand compile and it was incredible, mate. The surfing is amazing. So those four kids, Rocco, Leani, Zoe and Moses tied for the high performance of week five. And it's been working. Everyone's been getting their stuff. I get it to all all sorts of... Like, India didn't get their spy pack until, like, (laughs) August this year or something. Really? Yeah, it was so hard to get stuff to India. Some places are harder to send a prize pack to than others. Yeah. But the sponsors work with me, and we get them to everywhere. That's so cool. It's so cool, mate. Uh, Quick reminder that there's a $500, you know, only a few more days left in the $500 scholarship from a New Earth project is something that um, and what is that video? recognize. What specifically are we looking for in the New Earth project videos? Uh, doing good. Kids doing good in their community. They may be shoveling snow for the neighbour. They might be, you know, doing a beach cleanup. We've seen beach cleanups, food drives, that type of different thing. Any activity in your community that connects you to the community and shows us you doing something for other people. That's what we want to see. You doing good in your community. $500 scholarship there. We may split that up and give it to a few kids. I think that's most probably a good way to go about it. Massive thank you to GoPro. Got a bunch of uh, new GoPro angled videos this week, which was very cool. And, um, yeah, just be sure to go to the gallery, vote for the kids, support the kids, and then the kids have been sharing their stuff. We share it, they share it, others share it, and we create that momentum in the social media world that way, and it really shows the world what the future is going to look like because these young kids are the future. You had some really cool pros that you work with giving a shout-out to the blast off that was pretty cool to see that in my scroll feed of Mm. Instagram. You know what? And I, I thank Coa Smith. Kai Lenny, Vahini Fierro, Erin Brooks. Erin, you know, she reached out to me 
she says, is there anything I can do? Because she's been in the blast off the last couple of years and she loves what we do and she's seen the value. And so she did that. Erin commented, has been going to the videos and commenting on the videos. I sent an email around to my mates as well, just saying, hey, do you reckon you can go and leave a comment on the kids' videos? So creating that community support from the up, from the top down is kind of important to me, you know, and having having those people, you know, Kai Lenny making a shout out to the kids on how to use his GoPro, and where, how he uses it to get such amazing mm. footage, all of that sort of stuff just ties us all together, builds a community. People, thank you so much for watching our week five wrap up of the BL Blast Off video challenge presented by our good friends at GoPro. Thank you, PK. Thank you, A New Earth Project and Pipeline Studios. And thank you to all the kids. Keep those videos coming. Keep the Stoke alive, people. And do know that we love you.